Okay, give me just a moment here. Pop out chat. And... Skadoosh. Good evening, all, and I'm... Yeah, someone didn't make it to the show this afternoon, so tonight he decided to come on by. Yeah. Anyway, welcome. Tonight is a patron sculpt, but tonight's patron won't be here. Uh, he can't make it to any, either of the shows on Sunday. So, I'm going to have to pretty much do it off the cuff. And what is it? Well, it's an Aslan from Traveler. No comments from him about anything but an Aslan from Traveler. Go figure. So, let me go ahead and put this guy down. Ah. Get on, buddy. Now, for those who don't know, Traveler was one of the first tabletop science fiction role-playing games. And it pretty much, it was to sci-fi games what D&D is to fantasy. Uh, it came up with the idea of multiple tech levels, you know, going on up to, I think, tech level 15 was at a point where you actually had a uh, antimatter positron cannon on your starships and stuff like that. But it had multiple different alien races, many of which nowadays would be looked at as Oh, furries. But back then, I mean, it was hard to create something truly alien that could still be something that a player would be able to relate to. So, you had funny forehead aliens like Klingons and Vulcans and that, and you had furry aliens. Humanoid lions, in this case. So, what I guess I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just make a basic Aslan. Get him kind of, make him kind of dressed up a bit. You know, a little fancy clothing with a pistol, just to show that it's sci-fi, not fantasy. Yeah. So, of course, the first thing we got to do is uh, bring it over here. Go to Content Library, load in the Jointed Base Mail. And what we're going to do, a while back I created a Catfolk Blend Shape. Now, since the Aslan are lion-like, I'm going to give them a little bit of uh, muscularity. I'm also going to kind of make them a little bit bigger than average, so we're going to Scale him about 110%. Oh, 105. That's a bit big. 105. Okay. So this is our Aslan. The next thing we need to do is we need to give him a pistol that we can then uh, use as a base for positioning. So we're going to put in this horrible, crappy early auto pistol that I made. Okay, so now select the pistol, hide the pistol, file, export. We're going to take this, export it to Patron Mini's new new folder Aslan. This is going to be Aslan base. Except, I'm gonna hide this. Make the pistol visible. Ex <laughs> Sneeze, and then export. This is Aslan pissed base. Except, and then we're gonna delete the pistol because we're gonna make a new one in 3D Studio Max. 
file import and that's gonna be home meshes free sculpts patreon minis new aslan we're gonna load in the base figure and we're gonna load in the pistol We're then going to hide the Aslan itself, make the pistol a dull color so that we can see it, but it's not too brilliant, and display by object color. Yeah, there we go. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to select that, and delete it. We're then going to rotate this 45 degrees. that will bring it to vertical. Now, the next thing is we're going to rotate it 45 degrees this way. Actually 90 degrees. Okay, because it's easier to make when it's like this. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a box. It's going to be the barrel. This is going to be based on I'm not sure if this is an actual pistol or if it was a concept, but it's going to be based on a traveler style pistol that I saw some time ago. By some time, I mean earlier today. I'm going to add in a little bit more detail than what the actual one had. The poly. And what I'm going to do first, I'm going to connect once and bring that over so that it's about half a square there. Then, I'm going to connect again to here. Then, I'm going to select these and connect two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times. Okay. Now, loop, <coughs> but we're then going to deselect those. <coughs> we're then going to, sh oh, no, wait. We need to give this one a smack dab in the middle. Oh, this one, not eight, dang it. Okay, now, we select these, loop, and we deselect these. Now we're going to chamfer them to the point where it would be rounded off. Okay, select here, we bring it back to here. Bring them forward a little bit because we want it to be even. Select here and weld. And we bring this back a bit. Now we're going to select these back two edges and we're going to chamfer them so that they're rounding a little bit more. Okay, and then we're going to select these and we're going to bring them forward so that effectively from here over is almost half a circle. Okay. We are then going to select here and we're going to hit loop. Loop. Nothing. So we're going to select here and loop. No, so then we're going to select here and loop 
There we go. And we're going to chamfer 0 0.01. <clears throat> Excuse me. We come in here and we'll see that there's these need to be welded. These need to be welded. We get down to here, and once again, these need to be welded, and these need to be welded. Now, just for a brief glimpse, what we end up with Okay, what we need to do is we need to then grab these, bring them down a little bit, and then these, and bring them over a little bit. So we want it to kind of look like it's rounded towards the end of the barrel. based on a uh, Gauss pistol, if I remember correctly. Now, we select the front. We're going to extrude, not that far, not a full centimeter, but about to there. Okay, and we're going to shrink it. We're then going to inset nowhere near that far there and we're going to shrink this down to about the same vertical height as these are horizontal and bring it down and I can actually make it a little bit bigger up to there and then we extrude out again Actually, now that I'm looking at it, we really don't need it that small. So we're going to make it a whole lot bigger. And then bring it back in. About there. Now we're going to inset up there. <clears throat> And then we're going to extrude a negative amount, just a bit, just to make it a depression. Smooth level one, collapse all. And now we've got some, uh, we've got the basic shape of it down. We're actually going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, now here, the X is negative 16.268. So that needs to get moved to negative 16.268. Okay. Now, this is going to be odd, but we're going to select here, 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 and here. And we're going to extrude a local normal in a few millimeters. Now, we're going to select these edges and these edges and loop. Barrel. And then chamfer. 0.001 Mesh smooth 1 2 
There's the barrel of the gun. Actually, we can afford to make it bigger. And we're going to zoom back a bit to there. And then we're going to add in on the underside some kind of little detail connector piece. So we go to box. And we're going to go to here. Just make something. Then we're going to go over to Edible Poly and we're just going to move these vertexes. These guys back to there. These guys out to here. And then these guys up until they're no longer visible. There we go. And we're going to make sure that it is in the same X spot. So that's negative 16.268. select all the edges. Actually one thing we're going to do is we're going to grab this back edge here. We're going to bring it back and then we're going to select this front edge and bring it forward. So there. No, a little bit. There we go. Now we're going to select all the edges and we're going to chamfer 0.001. Okay, and then mesh smooth once, twice. Flaps all. We're then going to start with the handle in order to keep that center point where we wanted it. And now we're going to pivot this down 90 and this over 45. We're going to unhide our as line to see how it looks. As that gun is way too big. Yeah. So we're going to take that. We're going to select these sections. Convert pixel. Uh, convert the points. Shrink it. We're then going to pivot down 45 degrees so that we can place these properly. There we go. And actually this, we can actually widen them a little bit. And now we rotate it back 45 degrees. We have our pistol for our Aslan. Now, file export selected. We're gonna bang bang. Meshes. Free sculpt. Patreon. New. Aslan. Wavefront OBJ. Aslan load. Yeah, I know, but export. Done. Delete. We then go back to Daz Studio, File, Import, and we go back up to FreeSculpt Minis, Patreon, New, Aslan, and there. And we're going to parent it to the right hand. There. Now that looks like a pistol. Now we need to worry about the pose. And hello, Mark. Wait a minute, Mike. No, it, it worked for me. Hmm.
It's a Gauss pistol, technically, but yeah. Put it there. And we're going to shrink it. Actually, let's shrink it slightly. Okay, so the pose, I'm thinking just, so go for the hip first, and we're going to, let's see, for the pose I'm thinking of, Kick it forward, bend positive, view, side to side, that way. No, side to side the other way. Control D to get down on the ground. Front view to get. Okay, now this leg. Right view. And front view. Twist. There, let's go back a little bit. Perspective view. And then... Yeah. Bend it forward a little bit. Side to side that way, twist back. And it back side to side that way. So we need to go side to side this way. Okay. Pin translation. Pin rotation. And then this lock side to side and this lock side to side. And now There we go. That's looking better. I'm 
gonna twist that way. Actually, let's go ahead and pin this toe. bend this a little bit more and bend the head down but the neck side to side <clears throat> okay Now we're going to go back to content library and look to see if I've got a pose. Where's that fist pose? Left fist. Now, we're actually going to shrink the hands, the left hand a little bit. Just a little bit. And then we're going to twist this that way, bend it that way, Let's bring this out a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> We're also going to rotate it forward a little bit so it's on the center of the hip. Now, we can rotate that to there. And we're going to rotate the hand just a little bit. Just for that hint of arrogance. <clears throat> okay, now to turn this into an ass line. Okay, hide it, load in the pistol, file, export, Aslan pistol, <clears throat> accept, and now we're going to add in a base. Now let's go ahead and pop back here. Now, uh, What we got, we got bases to choose from. We've got a techno ship flooring type thing here. And up there on the far left, we've got diamond plate. But we've also got a couple grids here. And I'm thinking that top one is probably the best. The top left. So that's what we're going to go with. Okay, let me pop back here and file import I think that's grid one metal grade is this the one yes it is okay so we're going to select it and we're going to use the move tool and we're going to move it into position like so we're also going to Twist it a random amount. Uh, let's 
make it like that. That's not quite perfectly. Now we got a front view. And we lower this until it's in the right position. Okay. Actually, let's select the toe and the thigh. Now, unpin all. <coughs> pin translation, pin rotation. Select the toe, select the foot. Okay, there we go. We can bring this forward a bit. Actually, if that's the direction he's facing, then we need to rotate this a bit more. There. <clears throat> so we're going to hide the uh, pistol and the grate and re-export this because I moved the leg. Yes. Set. Then we're going to hide the Aslan and make his base visible and file export. We're going to replace where I had already done his Aslan base and pop open the ZBrush. Yay! It's ZBrush, and you're welcome, Michael. Now, import meshes, Briscoe Minis, Patreon, new Aslan, Aslan body. Here. And then we go to insert Polymesh 3D, and then import no, import Aslan pistol and then insert Polymesh 3D import Aslan base. This is how it's starting. Now let's go ahead and hide the hide the base and the Aslan and we're going to add in some detailing on this. First, we've got to make it super high resolution. So we go to geometry, we divide it till it's about 600,000. Yeah, that should do it. And then we're going to dynamesh at 1024. What that will do is that will solidify the joins here so it's now a single solid mesh. And we're going to subdivide it until it's there. That should do it. Now, frame here. Alright, it's a uh, turn off the floor grid, we don't need it. And we're gonna go to layer sub drag dot. We're going to then stroke Turn that on and lazy mouse off. We're going to change alphas. What we're going to do is we're going to go to 619 CS Tools Alpha. And let's go with this. We're going to shrink this down, rotate, and then we're going to kind of, no, Company. no, let's uh, make that intensity a little bit higher, one step higher.
there. Then we're going to take the alpha, we're going to flip horizontally. Oh, I forgot. Auto masking, back face mask. Not all of that will show on a print, but it's nice to know that it's there. We're then going to go in. And we're going to add in a nub on top of here by going back to standard. And bring that focal shift down and then just there. And then we're going to erase the bottom edge and the top edge. And then we're going to do simply extrude that by using the extract command. And we're going to get 0 0.01 extract. No. 0 0.03 extract. Accept. Now going to ask there, and we're going to merge magnify, make it bigger, and we're going to no. Use move next. And we're going to shrink this down so that it's the size, less than the size of that. I'm going to pull it out a little bit. Okay, turn off and that. And then we're going to geometry, dynamation 128. Oh, that's supposed to be cleared. Deselect that. Now we're going to dynamation 128. No. 256. There we go. And then divide, divide. Delete lower and merge down. Frame out. And that is our handgun. Okay, now we're going to hide the handgun. And the next thing we've got to do is we've got to make sure this actually looks like a, an Aslan. And one of the things is their ears go almost straight up. So we're going to have to play around with that. Mostly using the move tool. Right, we're going to bring this over.
We're also going to end up thickening that ear a little bit. Like... Inflating it after we've gotten it in position. Okay. Um, you can see the difference between the two ears. So now we go back to move and we're going to do the same thing with this ear. Inflate, and we inflate the ear and the space behind the ear. And we still need to move it a little bit more. And then inflate. Okay, frame out. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to subdivide, or we're going to smooth out his uh, muscularity. Just a bit in the belly area and the shoulder. Because he's going to be wearing a jacket. And in the back. I'm also going to kind of... There we go. And now we're going to dynamesh it. Well, subdivide and then dynamesh. Seven sixty-eight. Dynamesh. And now we're going to give one level of subdivision just to make it a few more points to play with when we make these masks for the clothing and the hair. Okay, now we're going to make this brush a lot smaller. We're also going to select the head and zoom in. Now, Okay. And bring it down here a bit more. And then we're going to shrink this. Down even more. The Aslan was not one of the worst traveler races. There were several that 
when they finally got past their reluctance to do something that a human couldn't relate to, they got some really weird ones. Now this is going to be subtool extract that that point zero four. We're now going to select him and draw to get rid of the masking. We go to geometry, we're going to dynamesh it at 128. And then we're going to smooth out down here. into there. And we're going to divide it a couple times and dynamite it again. The reason for that is that little point that we had. Now we're going to divide it. And we're going to go to Play build up tool. We're also going to change what alpha it's using. So, yeah. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add in some just some general mass. And coming from the front. And now we want to make sure that we've got it set to uh, auto mask back face. kind of build up back here. Okay. Now, we're going to go back and we're going to shrink it down. This time we're going to actually draw in not too small. Our
now. Oh. We're gonna go to Slash Tool. Oh. Slash. Okay. Get some soda real quick. And make sure we have the uh, his mouse turned off and drop that down to 14. Okay, now we're going to groove in. Get to groove thing. Actually, we're going to start it with add of 9. Because we're going to start off with the peaks on these. And then add in the hairs. So have uh, any of you heard the uh, really dark theory about uh, um, as my brain shuts down and thinking of the name of the daggone show Big Bang Theory it's a really dark theory that none of it ever happened Sheldon is just a typical comic book computer geek uh, who's imagining what his life might be like if he actually had gone back to college and gotten the degree that he wanted. And this is all just his imagination. Yeah, how's that for kind of sad and disturbing at the same time. Now we're going to go back to subtract and increase that intensity. And we're going to start cutting grooves in where the locks are. Well, I guess that uh, the imagination theory is no no different from what happened at the end of St. Elsewhere, which caused almost every single show on TV to end up being all in the mind of a small child staring at a uh, snow globe. And it turns out uh, Tommy Westfall was actually staring at a snow globe and imagining everything that happened in uh, St. Elsewhere. The result that every show that ever had a crossover with St. Elsewhere and every show that had a crossover with those shows 
and so on and so forth is actually all happening inside the mind of Tommy Westfall. If you've ever seen St. Elsewhere and the name sounds familiar, the season finale, or the series finale, uh, Dr. Westfall turns out to be a construction worker, at least in quote unquote the real world, whereas his son imagines him as a doctor. Yeah, how's that for a... Yep. So, the thing is, the number of shows that crossed over with St. Elsewhere and crossed over with those shows is staggeringly huge. To give you an idea... It ends up going so far as Sesame Street. Although that is because of Detective Munch from SVU. He kept playing that character, Detective Munch, and he played it on like eight shows as little guest star guest appearances with the end result that well since at least one of them was part of the Westfall verse so were all the others all right now what we're going to do is we're going to hide that hair and we're going to make a collar the way we're going to do it is we're going to bring that down to there. And we're going to bring it up to there. We're going to bring it around quite a bit. But, but yeah, so because of Detective Munch, a huge chunk of 90s and early 2000s TV has become part of the Westfall universe. Uh, but I mean, X Files is in this universe. Dallas. <laughs> And more. Let's look it up one time. The Westfall universe. Now it should be noted that Tommy Westfall was on the spectrum. Actually it's gonna come up around like that. We're going to make it look all fancy. I think it, if it wasn't for the fact that there were no, there were never any guest starring roles, I think it would have been hilarious if it turns out Game of Thrones it was in the Westfall universe. That's just me. Anyway. So this is going to be a collar. We're going to extract it at point zero 0.02. Extract. Accept. Draw. Go back to him and draw to get rid of the masking. And then just for the heck of it. Yeah, okay. Now the way we're going to detail this, we're going to start off with 
slash to orb cracks tool rather. Make sure to leave it on. Lazy Mouse, and then we're going to click and drag around. There we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give it a deco. And by that I mean we're going to use the scene tool for this next bit. No. Increase intensity. Start from here. Let's increase that intensity and make it a little bit bigger. Shrink this a little bit and smooth right here. Okay, and then we go back to Slash, and we're going to kind of make sure to reinforce this seam. And then we're going to draw where our Little bits will be like this. Okay. Just a second here. Uh, all of a sudden I'm getting really, really tired. Now, we're going to use that seam. We're going to continue. This time we're going to come from the collar. We don't want the slash, we want the scene. Other way around. And then we're going to layer alpha off and shrink. Gonna put a add shrink. Increase in size. Oh, look at 100. Okay. Okay. 
DJ, I have no idea what game you're talking about. Uh, real quick, we need to go in and smooth out that butt crack because he's got pants. Okay, I'll uh, turn on transparency so we can do this properly. We'll come down across and back up. Hide the mantle. And fill in this. This is going to make it basically a double breasted jacket. by it, I mean his torso. Point zero one two. Go back to inflate the sub. Make it bigger. Move. Okay, now we're going to go to Inflate. We're going to turn on Lazy Mouse and shrink the radius quite a lot and increase the intensity. What we're going to do is we're going to follow along. Oh, no, we need Add. Uh, yeah, we need to move that to. Okay, there we go.
Okay. Now we're gonna go back to layer. Whoop. Yeah, I'm gonna have to call it a. I can't concentrate on the drawing. I'm sorry I had a early start this morning that didn't really do well for my ability to think. Okay, so we're gonna save this as as we're gonna. Well, let's make the hair visible just so we can. Nice. The current state of the Aslan. Save as. Sorry, I'm just, it's something about this, about what's happening right now with uh, the usual nonsense going on at home is it's, it's really making me sleepy. Okay. In order to keep from having a permanent keyboard impression in my face, Gonna be diff I'm gonna go ahead and log out, and that is going to be the five, the four, the three, the two. Eh? Yes, it is my friend, and the one. Deep deprivation might be fun theater, but it's bad for sculpting. Bye bye. <laughs>